anywhere. Kobe Bryant, perhaps you've heard of him. He scored 33,000 points and change in his regular season NBA career. Third on the all-time scoring list behind only Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Karl Malone. Wilt Chamberlain, the only player in NBA history who scored more points in a game than Kobe did. Wilt, of course, had 100. Kobe scored 81. Only 18 of those came against Jalen Rose, <laughs> even though that has been widely misreported. Oh, All that scoring would earn Kobe 18 All-Star appearances. Only Kareem had more. Kobe, an All-Star MVP four times, tied for most all-time. And he said last year, the most important thing is winning championships. I don't care about anything else. Well, he did that, too. He won five rings. He was a two-time Finals MVP. And he is going in a new direction now. Kobe was in New York last night to promote his new book, Training Camp, which is the first installment of his Wizenard series. Fanatics had a book launch event with him at the NBA's flagship store on Fifth Avenue, and he and I had a chance to sit down before he spoke to the crowd. So three years ago, we were together, and you were telling me that you had this idea for this book project that was sort of a Harry Potter-esque yeah. kind of concept. And here we are, three years later, because this project has come to fruition. So congratulations. Thank you. Tell us about it. And, and how did Kobe Bryant decide to do this? Well, it was just, you know, I just felt like I learned so much from the game. I'm trying to figure out different creative ways to share those, uh, those experiences, you know, without coming across as being preachy. You know what I mean? So, like, things that I've learned from the game that I try to teach to my kids, for me to just come out and tell my kids what those lessons are, they don't listen to me. You got to figure out a creative way to package it up. This way they can kind of find those Easter eggs on their own. And that's when I started coming up with ideas, you know, creative concepts and stories to be able to instill those life lessons in. You know. I want to talk about pressure because there's a lot of, lots of people face a lot of different pressure sure. in a lot of different ways. Sure. It feels to me like NBA stars right now feel as though they are under an enormous amount of pressure. They don't seem to be happy most of the time. When you were at the top of the mountain, when you were the biggest star in sports, were you happy? Oh, of course, because I was playing a game I love. You know what I mean? The, the, the happiness comes from that, first and foremost. And then, obviously, you, know, you have frustrations. You have moments where you're you know, happier than others, right? Um, but when you're doing something that you love to do, the happiness is already there. Now, there's a certain termination and you know, uh, frustration that comes along with the job. But ultimately, I believe that they love the game. So, How do you perceive that, though, when you hear guys talking about all of the pressure? It feels like that is, has been magnified. I don't know if it is a function of social media, of, of the pervasive attention that they receive. Yeah. How do you perceive yeah, that? Yeah, I, I, think, I think that has a lot to do with it, actually, because the opinions are there. You can see them. Whereas, you know, when I started playing you know, many, many years ago, you'd have to wait until the next morning to get the newspaper and see what bad stuff people said about you. Now you go on social media and you get inundated with that pressure and criticism and all that sort of stuff. But still in all, you know, it comes with the territory. I mean, the most important thing is, is the game. Are you leading the team the right way? Are you doing the necessary things to study your craft to put your team in the best possible situation to be champions? That's the only thing that matters. Criticism is going to come and go, right? You can have a great game on Monday. Everybody loves you. Have a horrible game, horrible game on Tuesday. You're the worst, right? It's going to be cyclical until you win a championship, and then everybody will calm down and love you for like two weeks, and then they'll say you can't repeat. <laughs> That's just the way it is. There is that one moment I remember you. I don't remember exactly where it was, but someone was saying something to you in an arena, and you held up five fingers. Yeah, which suggested to me that that was one of your. Closing arguments, right? Was, well, you got no, five it's, of these, and not too many other people. People do. want to know, what do you, you know, about criticism, for example. How do you deal with that? And you know, people try to downplay your career in some sh shape, form, or fashion. And I just hold up five because the most important thing that we do, you know, the goal is to win championships. This is what we're here for. Let's talk about your old team, the Lakers. It's been obviously a difficult season for them. How did it compare to what you expected? LeBron comes first year. What what has this season been relative to whatever you expected it to be? Well, yeah, I think they got, you know, uh, it was unfortunate because they got hit with so many injuries in rapid succession. You know, when they were rolling, I mean, they were playing very well. I think exceeding people's expectations. And then they got hit with all these injuries, kind of set them back, knocked them off kilter a little bit, and it's hard to reboot that. And so now, you know, they're caught in that rut. Uh, but next year should be better. And, and so what, if you were to give advice to Magic Johnson, for example, what would it be? Me give advice to Magic? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, he doesn't yeah. to you. Well, you know, I, I think it's just it's just a matter of being patient, right? And obviously, they'll make smart decisions. You have opportunities, things, pieces that you can trade, assets, and things of that sort, or. You can stay with the young guys who are extremely talented and have great upside and let them develop. Either direction you go should be a good direction. And how about LeBron? If, if he were to ask you for some advice as, as a guy who has been the face of the Lakers yourself for such a long time, what would you advise him? No, you just got to keep pushing, right? I mean, this, you know, seasons like this are what make the championships worth it.